grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ. Amen. Back in 2014, the small company called Amazon, the same Amazon that manufactures and releases that electronic reader called the Kindle, did a big survey to find out what the single most highlighted Bible verse was. So this morning we're going to play a little game. I'm going to give you three options and you let me know which one you think was the single most highlighted Bible verse. Behind door number one, you have John 3.16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. Number two, you have Philippians 4, 6, and 7. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God, and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. And behind door number three, you have Jeremiah 29, 11. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans for welfare and not for evil, to give you a future and a hope. So, how many votes for number one, John 3.16? Okay. How many votes for number two, Philippians 4? Okay, we're going to be pretty evenly split here in thirds. And door number three, Jeremiah 29.11? All right. Survey says... Philippians chapter 4. Were you surprised? A little bit? I was admittedly a little bit surprised, and yet, I have to say, I also wasn't very surprised by that answer. I'm not sure if they've done this study again since 2014, or if any company, for that matter, has done a study like this, but it certainly wouldn't surprise me in our frantic and insatiable society today that if they did do this survey again, Philippians 4 would probably be at the top of the list one more time. Don't be anxious. Despite all of the advancements, all of the achievements that humanity so often prides itself on, the truth is they've done next to nothing to reduce our stress, to reduce our anxiety. In fact, it's pretty clear if you look at the data that the more self-sufficient we believe we have become, the more stressed out and anxious we have become. According to many of the reports from some of the most prominent agencies that watch and measure these things, even the most conservative reports suggest that compared to last year, we are 19% more anxious and that 31% of adults above age 18 will have some type of anxiety disorder in their lifetime. That's one in three people. Now, I'm not a psychiatrist, and I know there are a wide variety of opinions on the cause and the diagnosis of anxiety, but I don't think you have to be an expert in the field to just look out there, live out there, and know that anxiety is a problem. And it's not just an issue in our day. It's not just an issue out there. It's an issue for you. It's an issue for me. It's been an issue for all of humanity since we first bought that lie from the devil that said, hey, you can have the knowledge. You can have the power to provide for yourself, to master your own life and to work all things for your own good. As we turn to our text for today from Luke 12, we certainly see that this idea of anxiety wasn't a new issue in Jesus' day, and it certainly certainly was an issue for his disciples. It says in our text that he turned to his disciples and said, I tell you, do not be anxious about your life, what you will eat, nor about your body or what you will put on, because life is far more than food and the body is far more than clothing. Don't seek what you are to eat or drink and don't be worried. 
All the nations of the world seek after those things, and your Father already knows you need them. Instead, seek his kingdom, and these things will be added to you. Sell your possessions, give to the needy, and instead provide yourselves with money bags that don't grow old, with treasure in the heavens that does not fail, where thieves aren't trying to get in and can't get in, and where moths can't get in and destroy. Where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. If we did another survey and we asked the question, what are the things that make you the most anxious? What would they be? What keeps you up at night? We'd like to think that they were noble things like righteousness, justice, morality, the poor, the condition of our own sinful heart keep us up at night. But as we look at the text, those aren't the things that our Lord listed, are they? More often than not, we're anxious about many other things. Things that satisfy the desire of our flesh, the the desire we have for physical things. The things we can see with our eyes. Whether it be food or possessions, Jesus narrows this issue of anxiety right down to the heart of what stresses us out the most. He says, sell your possessions, provide yourselves with money bags that do not grow old, treasure in heaven that does not fail, because where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. That heart that's so anxious. I think it's tragically ironic that in our sinfulness, at least for me, We fall into the trap of thinking that somehow if we can just get more of the very thing that makes us anxious, we won't be anxious anymore. (laughs) Acquiring money and possessions won't won't cure our anxiety any more than throwing gas on a fire will help put it out. And yet we so often believe that if we could just get that thing if we could just have a bit more, if we could just provide for that lack we have, then when we would be able to be faithful like we know we want and should. If those things could come into our lives, then we would be able to give as sacrificially of our treasures as God wants us to. We would be able to give of our time and our energy and our effort like we want to. The only cure for anxiety is trust. And you can only trust the one who is trustworthy. The one who is powerful enough to provide for what we really need. To provide for what really keeps us up at night. I think so many times we find ourselves anxious about and chasing after the empty things of this world because they seem to be the only things we can control. We know that when we die, the things of this world will die with us, that they ultimately have no value, but they so often seem to be the only things we can control. We can't control our death. And we know that because of sin, all of us will die. So we too often hold tightly and are anxious about the empty treasures of this world. And if we look at the heart of what Jesus is teaching in our text for today, control lies at the heart of his teaching. He says in verse 25, And which of you, by being anxious, can add a single hour to his lifespan? If then you're not able to do as small of a thing as that, why are you anxious about the rest? (laughs) Small thing, right? Just a small thing, like add an hour to your lifespan. How long? How much time? How much energy? How much effort and money has been put into finding the fountain of youth? 
how we have labored to find that next great miracle medicine that will help us live forever. And yet for all of our medicine and treatments that are no doubt a blessing we should be thankful for and that bless us in many ways, we still can in no way say that they have added even one hour to our lifespan. To say that would mean that you would have to know the exact time and the exact manner in which somebody was going to die. And no man or woman knows that about themselves, and they certainly don't know that about anybody else. But, Jesus says, if you can't do such a small thing as that, as add an hour to your life, then why are you worried about much bigger things like providing what you really need to be happy in life? If you can't do the small thing of adding one hour, why are you worried about the big thing of providing your own joy and peace in life? Jesus' words here can't help remind me of the story of when God was approached by a secular atheist scientist who said, you know, God, we've come a long way. I don't think we need you much anymore. You know, we, we, can, we can transplant organs that we've cloned into another body. As a matter of fact, we can even bring life out of dirt. You know, kind of like you did in that book of Genesis. God said, oh, really? You can bring life out of dirt, can you? Yep, the scientist said. Show me, God said. So ever confident in his abilities, the scientist went out and started to gather dirt in order to, to bring life from it, and all of a sudden he was interrupted, and God said, whoa, 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 whoa. What are you doing? Well, I'm getting the dirt so I can bring life from dirt like you did. God said, I don't think so. Go get your own dirt. In his teaching, Jesus is trying to get us to realize the real problem, the real source of our anxiety, sin, and the death our sin has earned us and will bring us. Jesus is trying to get us to wrestle with sin and, and the death of our anxiety so that he can provide rest, an answer to that anxiety. Assurance and peace to that anxiety. So that he can reassure us by the fact that there is only one who has the answer. One eternal God and creator of all things who reigns over all things, who fulfills all things, and who alone not only has the power, but who has the loving desire to not only provide salvation from death, which he has done, in the death and resurrection of Jesus. But a God, our loving Heavenly Father, the one who clothes the lilies of the field, the one who feeds the ravens, the one who made the stars, that same awesome God desires to provide for our needs each day. In His time, in His way, Our Lord, who didn't spare anything for our salvation, by sending His perfect Son to die a death on the cross our sin deserves, will not spare anything to make sure we have everything that we need to be truly happy, truly content, regardless of the circumstances we find ourselves in. The peace that God has promised to give us the serenity to endure even the most difficult times in life, and the confidence that will help us endure with joy only comes from faith, from trust, from trust in who God is, in His faithfulness, in His goodness, His perfect provision that He has proven to give us in His Son. We're set free from worry and anxiety 
not by believing in God for the sake of getting something we feel we want, as if faith is a bargaining chip. We're set free from anxiety when we believe and trust in God because He's God. Because He alone has the power to grant us life and life everlasting. And because in all of His love and all of His mercy and all of His compassion, He didn't even spare His own Son so that we could be forgiven, so that we could have the assurance of heaven. When by faith we remember and live in the knowledge of the truth that we have been made sons and daughters of the Most High God. That's when our anxiety joins our sin and is separated as far as the East is from the West. It's in the confidence of knowing and trusting in Christ as our eternal worth and our only treasure that the Apostle Paul would say in Romans 8, What then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, how will he, not also with him, graciously give us all things? And my friends, the good news of the gospel is that God has already given you all things. He's given you heaven. He's given you his son. His Son who one day very soon will come back with all the glory and all the majesty of heaven for you. Amen.